for 10 years. It wasn't like that before. It was, it was crazy. Um, in verse 2, the Bible says, And Asa did that which was good and right in the eyes of the Lord. For he took away the altars of the strange gods in the high places and break down the images and cut down the groves and commanded Judah to seek the Lord God of their fathers and to do the law and their commandments. So when Asa came on the scene, there was false gods, there was, there was idol worship, there was all this crazy stuff going on. But in verse 1 it says, in his days the land was quiet ten years. The name of the message is keeping out of the noise around you. This day and age, during, during this day and age of our lives, there's so many things changing all around us. The government's getting bigger, overstepping boundaries, our rights are being infringed upon. One can't help but be looking toward Jesus coming back. I know every single day, and we should be looking for Jesus to come back, period, whether it's good or bad, no matter who the president is, no matter what law got passed, we should be looking for Christ to come back. That's our blessed hope, man. That's, that's, that's what gives us just that drive. Like, hey, you know what? Jesus is coming back, man. This is as bad as it's going to get. And we've got to keep that in mind as we go through every day in life. But we're going to look at what Asa did in his life and the things that, that he did that, that just drowned out all that noise. You know, if there's idol worship going on, if, if you know, it's, it's kind of like a, a president takes over after years and years of just a cultural downturn. Think about President Trump when he took office, right? And I'm not, I, I did not intend to get political at all because I, I, don't, I don't like that a whole lot. But anyway, but what, what he had a lot of cleaning up to do. Well, that's what Asa did when Asa stepped in. I'm not comparing Asa to Donald Trump by no means, but it's kind of the same thing what he had to do. He had to step in and, and he had to clean it up. Um, so, what was going on all around them? The, 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 the nation of Israel just got away from God. But during this season in life, we need to protect ourselves and put some safeguards in our lives. Protecting our family and insulating them from the world around us should be top priority. Notice I said insulate, not isolate. You know, I, I, man, I tell you, I, I, I have grown so much just spiritually by coming here and learning from Pastor Lane. And just looking, you know, rightly dividing the word of truth. That's what the Bible tells us to do for ourselves. And, and you know, I, I truly feel like that a part of the reason why our country's in the shape it's in is because Christians were, were isolating. Right, right. We were tucking tail and running. We were acting like we were being persecuted oh so bad, you know. But the people in China, they're having church in basements. Here we can go, we can come worship freely, but we just we want to pretend like we're being persecuted because that gives us an excuse not to do what we're supposed to do. What the God what God told us through his word to do. And, and, and you know, so many for so many years, man, it's been, you know, we're just well, we can't go around them. They're not like us. Well, if we don't go around them and they're not like us, well, who's going to be salt and light? Like the Bible says. That's what Jesus said. We're supposed to be salt and light. If our gospel be hid, it's hid to them that are lost. Well, who's hiding that gospel? We have. That's a whole. I'm not. That's not even the message tonight. But you know, you insulate. You don't isolate. Because when you insulate, when you build a house, you insulate it, right? Down here is to keep that god awful heat out, right? But you're not isolating yourself in that house. You're just insulating. It's putting up a protective barrier. And you see, that's what we need to do as Christians. We need to put that protective barrier in place. Not go hide in the closet every time something bad happens, but just put some safeguards in place. That's what Asa did. In, verse, in, the, in tonight's Scripture, verse 1 says, In Asa's day, the land was quiet ten years. Let's take a look at some of the things he did in order to quiet the noise of the world around him. First thing I want to show you tonight, verse 2, he did what was right. And Asa did that which good and right in the eyes of the Lord his God. He did what the Lord wanted him to do. Ask yourself this question tonight. Are you doing what the Lord wants you to do? First, the only way to know peace is to know Him. But you're not going to know peace unless you're doing His will. We get scared. We let our fear overcome us. 
You know, I, I just, you think it was easy for me uh, three and a half years ago to pack my family up, close, close my side business down, quit my good paying job, and move a thousand miles south to the swamp. Polk County's a different kind of hot. I was down there today, and I'm like, oh my goodness, this is, it's oppressive. But I could have been scared. I could have said, no, Lord. But you know what? We're living the dream right now. We are. Part of that dream is being able to come back to a place where we served for a year and a half, almost two years. A thousand miles away from home. Open door, Pastor Lance, yeah, come on down. You know why? Because we're doing the will of the Lord. We didn't get mad and leave. You know, oh, he preached against something and it hurt my feelings and we're leaving. People do that. It's funny. We'll laugh about it. But how many times that happened to you? Come on now. I've been there at least twice, okay? But I'm saying, you know, you can't, you have to do what the Lord wants you to do. Amen. Obey God first. Obey, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, but as the manner of some is, but all the more exhorting one another, all the more as we see the day approaching. Be in church. It's Wednesday night. I know you're here. You're probably like, uh, I'm here. But there's a lot of people who aren't. So are you influencing them for Christ to get them here on Wednesday night? It's a Morgan crying. I knew it. I knew it. it sounded just like Jonathan. <laughs> But no, he, Asa, he, he did what the Lord wanted him to do. The verse says he did what was right in the sight, in, in the sight of the Lord. Right. How are you going to know what is right? How are we supposed to know what is right? We need to have a walk with God. You can't do right unless you know what is right. In times like these, with all the noise and winds of perversion all around us, we know we have a reliable news source, and that is the Word of God. Uh, Romans, I think it's 8, 7 says, And faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Listen, you're not going to have faith to get through anything in your life unless you're hearing the Word of God. Unless you're reading the Word of God. Unless you're in church, you're hearing the Word of God being preached. So the first thing he did, he did what was right in the eyes of the Lord. Number two, he got his worship right. Verse three, verses 3-5, through five, For he took away the altars of the strange gods, and then the high places, and break down the images, and cut down the groves, and commanded Judah to seek the Lord God of their fathers, and to do the law and the commandment. Also he took away out of all the cities of Judah the high places and the images, and the kingdom was quiet before him. How do you keep all the noise out around you? Get rid of them idols in your life. He took away the altars of the strange God. The Bible says He commanded Judah. He didn't say, hey, look, it's optional. No, He commanded them. As their king, He commanded them to do that. Husbands, are you commanded God to be worshipped in your house? Dad, are you commanding your children to walk with the Lord? Now, I'm not talking about taking the Bible and beating them over the head with it, but you can teach them. But they're not going to have a walk with God if you don't. You hear, you hear so many horror stories and tragedies, and I pray this never happens to any of my children, but kids of, of people who grow up in ministry, who as soon as they turn 18, man, they're gone, and they wreck their lives within the first two years. They, they, they give in to temptation, they do things they're not supposed to. Thankful God can restore them. Amen? God doesn't give up on anybody. But I, I can't help to wonder if, if in that whole isolation process that took place all those years, if the kids weren't looking at mom and dad like, man, they're fake. Why in the world would why I want anything to do with this? My dad gets up there and he preaches the Bible, but I ain't seen him read his Bible in years. You open your Bible and all the dust blows out. Malls are flying out of it, you know. But I can't help to wonder if, if the kids just didn't see their mom and dad walking with the Lord. People are people. We, we all have ups and downs. But your kids need to know that, hey, at the end of the day, we, we serve the Lord. We love God. You know, mom and dad may be at each other's throats sometimes, but we love each other and we love God. 
Because if we didn't love God, we couldn't love each other. You don't have to be mean-spirited about it, but you can lovingly lead your family to worship God. Asa changed the worship back to worshiping God. He made God the priority in all the land. If you're going to quiet the noise around you, take the focus off what is going on and put it back on God. So many people worship the news, social media, etc. This has become an idol in this day and age. And it's robbing God of the very worship He demands. You can control that. You can. You know, it's, it's, you see so many kids that, that end up struggling with pornography and they're not even 16 years old. You know why? Because their parents stopped paying attention to what they were doing. They see mom and dad staring at a screen all the time. They want a screen in their hand. Alex has just turned seven, man. He asked about a phone the other day. I said, yeah, okay. <laughs> That's funny. It'll snow in Miami before that happens. But why? Because I don't want him, I don't want that in front of him. When he goes over to grandma's house, grandma's just like, just gives him the phone, puts something on YouTube. And no, you can't do that. Have you seen some of the ads that pop up in the middle of that? It all starts, you just plant that seed, man. That's all it takes. I mean, if we as men and, and, and adults and, and husbands and wives, we struggle with that stuff too. You think a, a little kid isn't going to? Just think about that. You know, the, the phones and electronics have become idols in this age. The third thing, he put boundaries in place, verses 6 and 7. And he built fenced cities in Judah for the land had rest. And he had no war in those years because the Lord had given him rest. Therefore he said unto Judah, let us build these cities and make about the walls and towers and gates and bars while the land is yet before us because we have sought the Lord our God. We have sought Him and He hath given us rest on every side. So they built and prospered. He put boundaries in place. In the end of verse 5 it says the kingdom was quiet before Him. After they got their worship right, there was peace. But wait, He had to put up boundaries in order to protect that peace. We have to do that in our own personal lives. You can apply that to your home. You can apply that to your marriage, to your, raising your children, or just as an individual. Some of you guys you don't have kids anymore. You've got grandkids, maybe even great-grandkids. But you can put boundaries in place in your life. You see, people want to rob your joy. Satan will use people to rob your joy. Let me put it that way. Satan wants to take your joy. But we, like Asa, have to put boundaries in place. Verse 6, he built fenced cities. He didn't hate the people, nor was he trying to control them. He was insulating them, trying to protect them from the outside. That's why he built the fences. You know, the, the common uh, agenda being pushed today is how evil fences are. I've never had a fence do anything mean to me. You know, if anything, it protected me when I had my paper out from that snarling pit bull behind the fence. Right? But, but what did Asa do? He, he, after they got peace, they got their worship right, there was peace in the kingdom. He wanted to protect that kingdom. When you get saved, you get to know the Prince of Peace. The Holy Spirit comes to live inside of you. You have to put boundaries in place. Hey, I can't go there anymore. Or hey, instead of doing this, let's just go to church. Because if we don't, then what's, what's going to happen? Satan's going to creep in. And he's going to get us. Parents, let me ask you something. Are you putting boundaries up for your kids or yourself? The Bible is a book of boundaries. God gives to us in order to keep us from going the wrong way. At the end of the verse, it says there was no war. The Lord had given him rest because he changed the worship and set some boundaries in place for his people. Verse 7, as a result, they built and prospered because they sought God. And that was the result. That's the, the land prospered. Because they put God first and they protected what God helped them build. God's trying to do a work in you. Every single person in this room, it doesn't matter how old you are, it doesn't matter how, how long you've been saved, God wants to do a work in your heart. But He's not going to be able to work as freely unless you put those boundaries in place. You remove those idols from your life. Because it's so easy to get a distraction between you and the Lord. Number four, He knew there were still going to be battles. Verse 10 and 12, the Bible says, Then Asa went out against him, and they sat to battle in array in the valley of Zepatath at Marisha. I, I think I pronounced that right. I don't know. And Asa cried unto the Lord his God and said, Lord, it is nothing with thee to help, whether with many or with them that have no power. Help us, O Lord our God, 
for we rest on Thee. And in Thy name we go against this multitude. O Lord, Thou art our God. Let no man prevail against Thee. So the Lord smote the Ethiopians before Asa and before Judah, and the Ethiopians fled. He knew there were still going to be battles. Asa knew there were going to be battles down the road, but when the battles came, he knew he couldn't do it in his power. You know, pride will get in and keep you from getting that victory that God wants you to have. Listen, you may, you may be struggling with something. Maybe just you and the pastor knows. Maybe nobody knows. And that's hindering you from doing what the Lord wants you to do. It's hindering you from being obedient to the Lord. Asa knew that the battle was going to come. You're battling something right now. What did Asa do? He called on the Lord immediately. He said, Lord, we can't, we can't do this. We need you. Christian, when sin gets into your life, and it's going to happen, it happens to all of us. You have to know that you can call on the Lord. And He'll deliver you from that. He doesn't want us to carry that around for the rest. Nobody's perfect, man. You know, I you know something that that one of the, one of the biggest things that I had personal revival in my life is I had to come to the realization I didn't have it all figured out. It only took me thirty eight years to figure that out. But listen, you, you didn't save yourself. You don't have to keep yourself saved. You don't have to fight the battle by yourself. Verse 11 says he sought the Lord. That's what we need to do, Christians. We need to seek the Lord. The same God who he worshipped, the same God who prospered, is the same, very same God when times got hard, he went to for help. There's going to be noise. There's going to be battles. There's going to be problems, heartache, and pain in your life. You have to realize you cannot do this on your own. And remember that the same God who has been with you up to that point is still with you. And the Bible says, I will not leave you nor forsake you. Just because you mess up, just because you get off track, just because you get your worship out of place, God hasn't left you. I got saved when I was nine years old. You would think the rest of my life would have been perfect. It wasn't. But the same God who saved me when I was nine years old, when I was 26, and I I I hit my rock bottom, and I was at the end and I didn't know where to go, was the same God who picked me right back, cleaned me off, and put me in the ministry. So don't tell me God can't do it. He's there for you. Asa realized that, same thing. And in verse 12, it says, the Lord smote them, talking about His enemies. God went in there and fought that battle for him. You can't fight that battle on your own. It doesn't matter what it is. Sometimes the battle is against ourselves. You can't fight yourself, man. Just give in and let God. God gave Asa the the victory because he did the right things. He got the worship right. He set some boundaries and called on him for help when the battles came. So many Christians are are living backslidden because they're too proud to call on God and ask for help. You have an open line of communication with our Heavenly Father. All you have to do is just get on your knees and ask God, Lord, please help me with this. I don't know where anybody's at here tonight. I've been gone for eight months, so I wouldn't... Uh, picking through people's dirty laundry or anything. But the Lord's there for you if you need Him. You just got to call on Him and ask for help.